Welcome to Cook with Joy. Well, Cook with Jake and Joy, and got to add Derek in there too. Yep, cook I'm with, here. I'm cook here. with Jake and Joy. And this is our fifth season of doing a cooking show, and we're kind of morphing it into more of a millennial feel, and including Jake because we work together, and Derek just wants to eat hold all his the way time. in there and eat all the time. So this season, we've been showing you recipes that are a little bit easier. As always, they're all vegan and gluten-free. But this, this season, we're, we're kind of shooting towards how people are starting to eat, which is more like kind of on the run, like you eat, Derek, right? Like always. Just little pieces here and pieces there. You want it to be as nutritiously dense as possible, but it's got to be delicious, right? Exactly. And, and fast. And, and really, my goal is to get people to like make their own food and have it be ready so that when they're on the go, they can just grab it out of the fridge and they're, they're ready to go. Busy families can have something that's quick. They get home, maybe they make it together, but it's it's really the way that people are starting to eat. In this episode, we're gonna make a classic that everybody likes. I don't think there's anybody vegan, non-vegan alike that doesn't agree that one of the best things in the world is mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, yes. Am I right? Yes. yes. And usually, mashed potatoes have tons of butter and yes. cream oh, wait, no. and all that stuff. But you don't have to have that to have great mashed potatoes. And usually the gravy has chicken fat or turkey fat or beef fat. And you don't have to have that to have great gravy. And today, we're going to make mashed potatoes with a mushroom gravy. And you could pair it with turkey uh, breast that we've had before. It's a faux turkey breast. You could pair it with the stuffing that we made a couple seasons ago. But I think you're really going to like this. And what I like is I like to have some mashed potatoes and gravy on hand in the fridge because they really keep well and they, they mix up really well together. And there's tons of protein in the, in the potatoes and in the mushrooms. So we're going to get started with the potatoes. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, the first thing we want to do is choose potatoes. A lot of people like to use yellow potatoes for mashed potatoes, and I do too. I like these golden potatoes. They're, they're really nice. Their skins are delicate, and they can mash really nicely. But I like to add a little bit of color, so I like to use the reds. Now, I leave the skins on. A ton of the nutrition is in the skin of the potato. And yes, I know that when you cook it, you lose some of that nutrient content. But if you leave the skins on, you're getting more nutrient value from the potato than if you skin them. My husband likes some skin, so often we skin them. Uh, but Jake's husband, Jake, what, what, what do you think about skin versus unskinned? You know, I don't actually know if Alex has a preference. Um, we, he always makes potatoes skins off. Um, I don't care, I like either way. I like that the skin gives it a nice color. And if I can get more nutrients into my food by leaving the skins on, that's the way to go. Okay, so let's just agree for this episode, we're leaving the skins on. And we're gonna boil them, and you can steam them if you want, but we're gonna boil them, and we're gonna cut them into small enough pieces so that they can cook a little bit more rapidly. Could we boil the potatoes whole? Absolutely you could, but when you cut them into quarters like this, it just works a little bit better. All right, I've got some that I've already cut up before. We're gonna dump them into a saucepan. And sometimes I add a little bit of soy milk to these just to give them a little bit more, um, I don't know, they, they just cook out a little bit creamier. And then we'll add the ones that I just got and we're gonna put it on the stove. Come with me. And we'll bring them to a boil and then we'll turn them down. And while they're boiling, let's make gravy. Biggest thing about making vegan gravy is that you have to add a ton of onion and garlic to make it be flavorful and a ton of, of herbs because where the flavor comes in gravy that's made with the animal carcass is all the stuff that went into cooking the animal. So whoever like made the turkey, they added all this spice and all that stuff. And then the runoff is where the flavor comes for that gravy. So we're going to reproduce that without having to kill an animal. Is that cool? Is that okay with that you? That sounds good. Awesome. All right. Jake's husband, Alex, actually makes a turkey gravy and he makes a mushroom gravy. And I think everybody likes the mushroom gravy more than they like the turkey gravy. Is that right, Jake? Yeah, so he makes both types. So this last Thanksgiving, he made both uh, mushroom gravy and turkey gravy. He made about three or four times the amount of mushroom gravy than he did turkey gravy. And we had meat eaters, non-meat eaters, and the turkey gravy barely got touched at all. Everyone was obsessed with the mushroom gravy because it was so flavorful. And we've actually, we, <laughs> he's actually started making that mushroom gravy other times during the year because it's so good on anything. So I love, I love having mushroom gravy available no matter if it's Thanksgiving or not. We're making the mushroom gravy. Starts out with onions. I've already chopped all the onions up because that's really time consuming and I was crying. Aww, and, and Derek nice. gave me a good tip, Derek. Derek. I, I actually added something to the show. You, well, you always add something to the show. I mean, something show. productive to the show. You always add something productive to the show. 
But what did you tell me? Uh, so I said when you were crying that I learned from my mother back in the day that if you rinse the onion in water, it washes off all the exterior acid, which is what ends up getting in your face to make you cry. I thought that was fascinating. I've never heard that. I The only trick I know about not crying when you do onions is, to, well, actually I know two. One is to wear goggles, which I probably would never do. And the other one is to put a matchstick in between your teeth and the sulfur absorbs whatever it is that makes you cry. So Do, do you do you like the matchstick? I don't, and so that's why I didn't do it. And, you know, I was reminded that it's not bad to cry. It's a good thing to cry. Okay, I'm going to get the mushrooms going. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil just to make them a little bit tender. We want to get the, the did I say mushrooms? I didn't mean mushrooms I meant onions we want to get the onions translucent and so I'm going to get them on the stove while I chop the mushrooms up I'll be right back all right now we're going to cut up the mushrooms and I've got a couple different mushrooms going on and often I'll actually use dried porcini mushrooms in addition I'm using shiitake mushrooms I'm using white button mushrooms and I'm using cremini mushrooms they all just have a slightly different flavor and we're just going to chop them up get them sauteing with the onions and then we're going to add some garlic and get that really nice aroma going. We're gonna add some basil, some thai, um, some thyme, some oregano. So you can tell me about all the chromium that's in mushrooms? Yeah, I mean, mushrooms have tons of chromium in them and they're, it's a really important uh, mineral for brain function, for hair growth, for nail growth. And it's not, chromium is not found in a lot of vegetables. So getting them from mushrooms is awesome. And I suppose, Vegans eat more mushrooms than non-vegans because they they use them often to replace what meat eaters would be eating, and they, they really like those big portobello mushrooms. Those make awesome sandwiches, steaks. Like Derek, you want to have a steak? Have a portobello mushroom steak. Well, we made a with stroganoff, I think, one time. We did. That was not one of my favorite dishes, but we did we did do that. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic and these mushrooms to the onions that are sautéing. So we're gonna add the mushrooms. I've got the, the garlic in there with these onions and this is going to be amazing. Now the mushrooms are gonna sweat, so they're gonna to add to the liquid. When I looked at the onions, they looked a little bit light on liquid, um, but because the onions are gonna sweat and add liquid to that, I don't need to worry about it. But let's turn the heat down just a little bit, a skosh as they might say professionally. And then I'm gonna put a cover on them that's gonna get them to steam a little bit while I cut up the herbs that we're gonna add. All right, now let's cut up some herbs that we're gonna add. Some herbs? Some herbs. All these herbs came off my vertical garden, and what I love about that is two things. Number one, the smell of them is outrageous. They're just absolutely so much more nutritiously and nutritious, nutritiously and deliciously dense than what you buy at the store, and they're fresh. They come right off of your tower. The other thing that I love about it is that you know how you buy um, a bunch of herbs that you think you're going to use in a recipe. You only need like a half a teaspoon of them, and then they go bad, right? Oh, do you, yeah. Do you, do you ever time. do that? Yeah, you spend uh, ten dollars on a thing of thyme. You use a pinch of it, and then the right. rest of it just sits in your cabinet. Right. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't know is that some herbs you can just find growing randomly, urbanly, like here like where mint? I mint, um, oregano, uh, especially rosemary. Rosemary is something that people use as a, um, as a ground cover and you'll find it in almost every neighborhood. Just start walking around and you'll notice it. Here where I live, they even have Thai basil and thyme growing on the side of the, of the house. But I'm gonna use the stuff that I grew and the smell of this is just outrageous and it's really gonna add to the flavor of this gravy. So I've got basil, I've got oregano, and I've got two different kinds of oregano, actually. This purple oregano has a slightly different flavor and smell than this green, younger oregano. I'm going to chop all of that up, and I'm also going to add some thyme. You could add marjoram if you wanted as well. I don't grow marjoram, but I do have it dried. But for this recipe, I think I want to use all fresh herbs. I think it's going to make a real difference, and I think we're going to love, 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 love it. You don't have to just have mashed potatoes and gravy at the holidays. I think that's the only time we ever think about making it. When I grew up, we had mashed potatoes and gravy all the time. Did you, Derek? Is I that, did. Is that yeah. a staple at your house? Of course, because it's easy and it's filling and it's tasty. Yeah, and it, that, I mean, exactly. You just hit the nail on the head. It's, it's easy, it's inexpensive. I mean, potatoes are pretty, pretty inexpensive. I mean, I always buy organic and I like those Yukon Golds, but you could use any kind. You don't have to get the, the more expensive kind. You could you know, use a russet potato to make to make mashed potatoes out of. Time takes a little bit of time to get off of these stalks. You don't want to get the woody stalks into the mix because they're gonna, they're not gonna be great and you'll be eating your gravy and it'll be like, ugh, what's that? You would hate that, it'd be terrible. 
So make sure you pull those all off. And um, one thing about the vertical uh, garden that I grow in is that you can grow multiple herbs in one port. So I don't have to just waste space. You know, a lot of times you get like really big bushy plants. Um, but with the vertical garden that I use, I can choose how many different, like I could have basil, oregano, and thyme because they all grow at different heights. I could have them all growing in one little spot. And, uh, and then that really makes the best use of the space. You only take up like um, five square feet. And, uh, and if you want to grow them indoors, you can as well. You can use lights. So they're really an efficient way to, for, a, for anybody who wants to be a great cook, to have fresh herbs and fresh greens um, in your kitchen year round. And if you want more information about that, just message us and, and we'll, we'll get you the info where you can buy one and, and what our recommendations are for the, the different light systems that you can have. All right, so the last of the herbs, chopped really finely because you don't want to have great big pieces of herbs in your gravy. That would not be good. You'd be like, be, be terrible. And then we're going to add that to the mushroom, onion, and garlic mix. And let's see what we've got going over at the stove. This is really looking delicious, Derek. Oh, yum. I can't wait to eat that. How is it that something looks delicious? It really does. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit. And I'm going to add those herbs that we just cho chopped up, those fresh herbs. 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 I think we're going to love it. And we need to add a little salt and pepper and some tamari. So let me get some of that going. We let that saute a little bit more. Let me grab some um, salt, pepper, and tamari to add. And I'm using low sodium tamari. Tamari is gluten-free soy sauce, so they're not using um, whatever it is that they put in soy sauce that makes it not be gluten-free. And we're just adding a little splash, well, more than a little splash. It calls for a half a cup, but I'm not adding that much because I think that's a little heavy-handed. We can always add more later. You can't take it out once you've added it, right? The last part of this is adding soy milk, and then we're going to thicken it with uh, some, some gluten-free flour. So let's just let that steam for a little bit longer, and we'll get our soy milk and our flour ready to go. While the mushrooms are getting a little bit more, we want it really to get them really liquidy. We're going to drain the mashed potatoes, and we're going to mash those, put them together with a little soy milk and a little Miyoko's butter. So first thing, so we've drained the potatoes. And now we're going to add a little bit of the Miyoko's Butters. If you've seen these this before, Trader Joe's is carrying this now. Jake is obsessed with Miyoko's Butters. She loves, loves, loves them. We're going to add a generous amount of the butter. We want to have that flavor. And remember, this is not butter. It's faux butter. And Miyoko is just such a master. She also teaches you how to make this stuff. So she's not like keeping it to herself. If you want to learn how to make any of her stuff, you can just get one of her cookbooks and she'll show you how. I have a fancy potato masher. I got this for my wedding 18 years ago and I never use it. I use instead this masher that I think I got for a quarter at a rummage sale when I was like 10 years old and I've never been able to find one that I like more than this and it's just it's got a really 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 good handle on it. You could also use a lot of people like to get them really smooth. I don't care about getting them that smooth. If you want them super smooth you could use one of those uh, brawn hand mixers and they really, really, really get it smooth. So now I've got the butter mixed in. I'm gonna add a little salt, but once again, I like people to be able to add their own salt, so I'm not gonna add a ton. And I'm gonna add pepper. Himalayan brown pepper. Himalayan brown pepper. It adds a lot of flavor, so it's, you know, salt is just salt. And some people really crave salt, and certain nationalities like salt more than others. So I'm gonna let people salt on their own. The gravy will have some salt in it, especially with that tamari. But we're gonna get this nice and mashed. Getting your shoulder workout in? I'm getting my shoulder workout. Look at how pretty it is to have a little bit of the red skin in here as well. And that's adding nutrition and it's adding really a nice look to it as well. Redskins is my favorite football team, by the way. Is it? I can't believe they still let them call them the Redskins. The potatoes? No, the football <laughs> team. That's kind of crazy. I didn't know that there, that was still happening. Now, if you wanted to, if you weren't going to do gravy, you could do like a faux Parmesan in this would be really good and it would give it a little bit more nutty flavor. Um, you, could, you could grate some herbs into the potatoes. And what I find is that the closer to serving you are, you want to make sure that they're still really nice and creamy, adding enough soy milk to get that cream. And I think because we added the soy milk as the potatoes were cooking, 
They're gonna be a little bit creamier too. Oh my gosh, they look great. We're gonna put these into a pretty bowl after I've mashed them. Sometimes people like to mash the potatoes in the bowl and then you get the potatoes all over the edge. I don't like to do that. So we've mashed them and now I'm gonna find a pretty bowl that we can put these into and the gravy should be getting really close to being ready to add the, um, the soy milk and the flour to it. Pretty blue bowl looks really great with the potatoes. You're all about presentation. Well, I'd like to be all about presentation. You always say that, but it's, it's not true, but these look delicious. I am, I love mashed potatoes. Do you love mashed potatoes? Oh I just, yes. I, mean, I love them, love them, love them. I didn't make these a lot when Jake was a kid. I don't know why. I just, I guess I always think about mashed potatoes as being a holiday dish, but they're not. And it's, I tend to only make mashed potatoes at the holidays and I'm gonna stop doing that because this is, I'm so glad I did this. What you're saying is you're not gonna make mashed potatoes at the holidays anymore? Uh -uh. I'm saying I'm gonna make them more often. Let's finish the gravy. Mm. All right, I'm crossing my fingers on this because I'm just making this up. We're adding some soy milk to the yummy mixture of mushrooms and herbs and onions and garlic and tamari. And this is what's gonna give it the liquid. So, you know, when you're using animal fat, that's what the liquid is, it's all animal fat. But this is what we're having to do is to recreate, um, to recreate what the animal fat would do. Now, this recipe that I'm loosely following calls for you to whisk the flour into this mixture. My experience with that is that when you do that, it makes it lumpy. So what I like to do is get it hot first and then add a little bit of the liquid to another container, whisk that, and then add it back to the saucepan. Are you down for that? That sounds good. Yeah, I think it's, it's really, I think it's gonna be great. All right, so I'm gonna get a ladle out. Are you say it's gonna be good gravy? It's gonna be great gravy. Good and gravy. Good gravy. Isn't that, isn't that Charlie Brown? Good grief. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Good grief, Charlie Brown, okay. Now we're gonna use a gluten-free uh, flour. I like Pam's a lot. It's just an all-purpose flour that you can use for baking, you can use it for pancakes, you can use it for just about anything, and you can add stuff to it. I think if you remember a couple seasons ago, Derek, we did a shoot with my sister and we made those gluten-free pancakes. Oh, those are great. Uh, except I almost blew the kitchen up with the butter. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Well, I was too busy we, eating we Janice's pancakes. Yeah, to... they, were, they were really good. All right, so once this gets really hot, so I'm gonna do this a little bit, kind of, you know, just flying by the seat of my pants. I'm gonna take a ladle of this and I'm gonna add a little bit of flour. I don't wanna add it directly to the pan because I just think it's gonna start cooking it. It's gonna make it into like a quiche or something like that. I love quiche. You love quiche? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you want quiche as gravy, do you? Mm, no. So this recipe called for only a third of a cup of flour. But I don't know, that just doesn't seem like enough, but we'll try it. We'll try it and see what happens. I wanna add a little bit more liquid. So what I do, what my technique is to, you know, get it like going and get it, get the flour in it and then add more of the liquid so that I avoid that lumpiness that comes when you just dump the flour into the whole thing. And it, have you ever used flour to thicken anything, Derek? I have, yeah. Have you? And what's been your experience? Uh, I mean, I always go a little bit at a time because if you go too much, you can't take it out. Uh-huh, so do you take it out of the pan like I'm doing? Uh, no, I just add it to the pan uh -huh. and just do it slowly, slowly, yeah, slowly. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, hopefully you're gonna change your technique, you're gonna change your ways and start doing it like this because this really helps you to not get it lumpy. And then the secret is you gotta get it to boil because that's what makes it thicken up. And if I wanted to get a brown color, I could add a little bit more of the, um, of the tamari. And that would make it a little bit browner, but I'm okay with it this color. I think it's gonna be okay. So let's just let that boil for a little bit. Oh my gosh, I think I've outdone myself here. This is really, really beautiful. Um, I can, I, I, I wish you guys at home could taste this. I could put this into a, a little pitcher like this. Um, this is like a gravy boat. I'm not going to though, because we're gonna eat this all right now. Um, but I think that this is fantastic. We made this at Thanksgiving. I didn't make it actually, Jake's husband made it. 
Um, he did a little bit of a different twist on it. And you can too, you can experiment with all of this stuff and I hope that you do that. I hope that you take my recipes and make them your own. They're not even my recipes. I pick them up everywhere I go. Some I get out of recipe books, some I get out of newspapers, some I go to someone's house and they made something great. But I'm loving this idea of having mashed potatoes and gravy around. I mean, what teenager wouldn't love to have this as an afternoon snack or even just as a meal? Because you know, usually teenagers don't want to sit down and have this whole full on meal. But if I could give them some mashed potatoes and gravy and maybe a little side salad. I mean, how great would that be? I mean, I'm basically a teenager and I would love that. that it, it, it's going to be fantastic. So we're going to eat that right after we shut off the camera. Great. So we've got those amazing mashed potatoes with the Yukon Golds and the red potatoes. We've got the mushroom gravy that looks amazing, amazing, amazing. You could combine this with any one of the recipes that I've done in the past four seasons. And I think you'd have something that you'd be really happy with. We are so happy that you join us in learning to put more plants into your family's diet, in learning how to be more healthful, more mindful, and have more fun eating more delicious food from plants. And that's what we try to bring you here every episode of Cook with Jake and Joy. And Eric. And Eric. Let's eat. Okay.